Are you looking for a great way to add character to your space? Then this is the perfect show because we're gonna talk all about molding and how to use it to customize your home. Molding is a great way to customize a space. Uh, we've done it in almost every single room in our house. And I think the, the big thing about it is it really creates a custom feel and, and look to your, to your home. Especially builder grade homes. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of the time they're really cookie cutter and to get those extra moldings, it's pretty expensive. So we don't usually spend the money there. Right. right. And yeah. it, we've done so many projects. What are some that you can think of that um, oh my gosh, we have it in like every room, but I think some of our favorite are like the board and batten in our daughter's room that we did with some really inexpensive boards. Um, in both of our daughter's rooms, we did it two different ways, the board and batten and then trim on the top. Um, we put molding, um, we did baseboard molding really neat and we did some treatments in our bathroom. Um, we've just used molding a lot, some picture frame moldings in the bathroom. So lots of different ways to use molding. Um, our gallery wall, a little shelf, you know, building molding to basically kind of amplify whatever else you're doing with your decor. Yeah, uh, I, we want to just mention a couple of, and show you a couple of the easiest ones that we do, did in our house. And uh, ones that are very inexpensive that you can do yourself and really create a, a great look in your house. The first one we want to talk about is our baseboard that we actually put throughout our entire home. We really like the, the larger baseboard. Typically mm -hmm. it's like what, seven inches? And really, really expensive. Really chunky, really <laughs> expensive. And we really wanted that look. And, and so what we ended up doing is kind of creating a faux baseboard look. Right. Where if you kind of have to take a double take to see if it, it really was, if it really is a full piece of baseboard or not. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so what we did was, um, if you can tell here from this little example, we're going to pretend that the blue is the wall in your home and that this is obviously your baseboard. So if anything else, usually when you move in, your home has some kind of baseboard to it. This is um, an example of an existing baseboard. And then all we did was take some um, shoe molding and we added it to the existing wall by just raising it up about three inches. And we used, um, we just used a scrap piece of long scrap piece of wood as we went along so that we had the same measurement each time. And it helped really well to keep that three inch measurement, or I think it was around three or three and a half inch measurement, just perfect. So find a good width that works for you where it doesn't look like it's, okay, there's no way that's real. You know, so you, you gotta have a good span in here where it still looks like it's real. And then all we did was paint the inside white to match the baseboard and the actual shoe molding that went on top. Yeah, and uh, there are so many different materials as far as moldings go. Yeah. Uh, the one we actually used is, is a foam, so it's harder to paint. So if you have darker baseboards in your paint color, we definitely suggest going with like a primed wood or a natural wood. That will take so, the paint better because this is a little bit more slick. Right, something like this would be better if you have darker baseboards if you're not going white um, because it'll hold it'll hold the paint color better. Right. Uh, also yeah. too, um, I just want to mention that if you have a thicker baseboard that sticks out farther from the wall, think about using a trim that's a little bit thicker too to kind of mimic what's already going on because you want it to look as natural as possible. You don't want it to make it look like you put a piece of board up with white in the middle of the wall, really. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in general, there are several items that you need to make sure that any molding project you do looks seamless and looks like it's supposed to be there. Uh, and a big one is definitely caulk. So, yes. making sure after you get it up, after you get after you get your project done with your um, molding, we would run anywhere that you can see. You know, on mm -hmm. on an existing home, they they run caulk al along the baseboard. So we would run along the top and uh, just to make it look finished. It's a really great finishing tool. And then also- and We use paintable caulk as well. Make sure, because if you buy silicone, it, the paint isn't gonna stick to that caulk. Yeah, or you're gonna have to paint and then caulk after if you have silicone. Right, right. Which is fine too, but- We I like th the paintable caulk is just like one easy step. Yeah. So, so and there are a couple other projects um, that we wanted to share real quick. Uh, I think a big one for us is the laundry room. Yeah. We really wanted cabinets in the laundry room. They're just very expensive for the look that we wanted. So we ended up just doing something very similar to what we did with our, our shelves here, is we just added a piece of door casing to the front of it 
to make it look like it was a much thicker piece of board. Because really laundry. behind it is nothing. It's just the board. So it just gives the appearance of that chunky shelf look with yeah. that molding. How about that one? So this is an example of molding that we did in our master bathroom. And all we did with this was um, we wanted to have a board where we could put hooks for our towels on. So we have a board and then we wanted to find a really chunky, cool piece um, of molding that we could make a little bit of a shelf off of so we could like lean a small picture or item. So instead of buying the actual piece that we first wanted. $52 for six feet. Right, <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Um, we decided to take a piece of brick molding and then another piece of decorative molding and combine them together to make the piece that we really thought we wanted in the beginning. So it's just kind of a way to show you that you kind of have to think out of the box when you're using molding too. Sometimes it's not gonna be right there exactly what you need or you won't be able to afford it. So putting these two pieces together costs like a fourth of the price of what the other one piece of molding costs us. So this is another great way to kind of think out of the box when you're doing molding. And lay it out too. Like we go to Home Depot and Lowe's and we like lay stuff all over the floor and we're trying to see how it's gonna work together. And I even do like the one eye, like how's it gonna look when it's all together. And I think that's important and you don't look crazy. You look smart because you don't wanna buy a lot of money worth molding and then have it not work out. So, you, you know, take the time to see what it's gonna look like before you buy it. Yeah, and then all things molding here. One of the most important things about making sure it looks finished and well done is paint. How, how it's been painted. Right. So uh, brushes that you use, what do you suggest? So I, I really like semi-gloss finish for molding. Um, and I use a non-textured roller if it's a large piece of molding, say um, a board that's flat and I wanna get a good finish, I use um, my non-textured roller. And then I use this purdy paintbrush. It's not just pretty, it's a purdy. I really like it. It's angled and so when you have grooves, in your molding, it makes it really easy to be able to get into the molding with each swipe because it's a little bit finer on the ends and it helps get into those little creases. Really, really like that. And make sure before too that you have sanded your nail holes and other things when you put your molding up really well. Again, we like to use um, this um, putty that starts purple, dries white. When it's white, it's right. I know, it's just true though. I wanna always sand too soon. And with molding, you really have to let things dry and sand it well to get that, that seamless look that you're going for. So that's a great segue into our TNT of the show, which is tips for getting a flawless look when painting molding. So take it away, Handy Dad Paul. Hi DIYers, it's Paul, also known as Handy Dad, with your TNT tips and tools. Today we're going to talk about how to get that flawless look on your moldings. Moldings usually come two different ways. This strip of molding is already primed and ready to receive the final coat of paint. These two pieces of molding are raw molding and they will need to be primed first with a product uh, like Kills or any other similar kind of a um, primer product. Uh, the next thing that uh, you'll do after that dries is you'll want to paint your molding with either a semi-gloss or a glossy uh, paint so it'll have that finished sheen on it. One tip is to add a paint conditioner to your paint um, so that will flow easily. It takes a little bit longer to dry but you get that hard uh, shell finish look without brush marks. Most of the molding in a home, in a new home, is uh, sprayed and so you get a very, very even finish and you don't see brush marks. Um, in an existing home, it's harder to spray that molding, much, much more difficult and this is a great tip if you add this uh, product or a similar paint conditioner uh, to your paint, you'll get a much smoother finish. There's two ways that you can apply that final coat of paint. A great brush, Purdy is one of my favorite brands because they make a quality brush. This is a two inch angled brush. And if you have a larger surface, a non-textured uh, foam roller works great also. Just as in any project that you have, having the right tools, having a little bit of knowledge can make your do-it-yourself project a lot easier, a lot more fun, and you'll love the results.